Jesus said, I am the resurrection and the life. Those who believe in me, even though they die, will live. And everyone who lives and believes in me will never die. I'm convinced that neither death nor life, nor angels nor rulers, nor things present nor things to come, powers, nor height, nor depth, nor anything else in all of creation will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus our Lord. Since we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so through Jesus God will bring with him those who have died. So we will be with the Lord forever. brought nothing into the world and we take nothing out. The Lord gives and the Lord takes away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. The steadfast love of the Lord never ceases. His mercies never come to an end. They are new every morning. Great is his faithfulness. God so loved the world that he gave his only Son, so that everyone who believes in him may not perish, but may have everlasting life. Welcome to Blackburn Cathedral and a particular welcome to Pam and to Mark and to Pip and the wider family and so many friends as we gather here to celebrate the life of Peter Jelly and just the number of people here today I think is a testimony to the man that he was and very much still is in our hearts and minds. We meet in the name of Jesus Christ who died and was raised to the glory of God the Father. We've come together, as I say today, to remember before God Peter and all that he was and very much still is. To give thanks for his life, to commend him into God's merciful keeping. And as we begin, let's just be still and I'll say a prayer on behalf of us all. Let's pray. Almighty God, you judge us with infinite mercy and justice and love everything you have made. In your mercy, turn the darkness of death into the dawn of new life and the sorrow of parting into the joy of heaven through our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. The service will basically run unannounced, but I just want to say right at the beginning, when we come to the prayers a little later on in the service, they're not going to be led uh, by Sue Ball, who unfortunately has had to have an operation last week uh, and was not able uh, to be part of the service today. But John Azelwood from the parish is stepped up, which is great, and he's going to lead the prayers for us. But as we begin, let's remain standing as we sing this great hymn of confidence, Christ triumphant, ever reigning, Saviour, Master, King.
please be seated. Piano at a funeral. Oh, piano at the funeral. Dozens of keys that bring sounds so sweet. How have you played this heavy heart song? A million tunes you've played, and more we'd hope to listen to. But these last keys have left us gathered here in tears and woe. This piano, the sweetest of us all, a warrior to the very end. You played through the riots of pain with your soft smile and enduring heart. This piano, full of youth, but now gone. You played with the tune of love and warmth, the tune of laughter and joy. Now you made the tune of family shake. You made a song that would never heal. O oh, piano at the funeral, I hope up there you can see everyone who's hurt and come to pray. Our parents cry, they will say farewell. You have to feel this love, it hurts from here. Play in heaven how you played for us and let the angels celebrate. Amongst them, they have the best of us. O oh, piano of beautiful songs. One day before Her Majesty left us, and quite rightly hogged all the headlines, we lost another national treasure, our dad. He would have been surprised to find himself here. He was convinced he'd live to a hundred and be shot by a jealous lover. But he'd have been chuffed to bits to see how many family members and friends, old and new, had made the effort to be here in the cathedral he loved. Mum used to joke that he spent more time here than at home. What can I tell you about Dad that you don't already know? His first job was as a signalman on the railways. He selected the hockey umpires for two successive Olympic Games. He had his tonsils removed at home on the kitchen table, believe it or not. He could peel an apple in one flawless spiral, and he would drive miles out of his way to avoid a traffic light or save one peer litre on fuel. Dad was a man whose glass was always half full, preferably with a nice Garvey de Garvey or chilled Sancerre. His po positivity and energy meant he lived a very full life. He had many passions, hockey, gardens and flowers, his faith, and after mum, his greatest passion was music, especially church choral music. Like his dad before him, he became a chorister at St. Mark's Mansfield at seven years of age, and then became their organist in 1947 at the age of 17. He played the organ almost every Sunday, apart from during his nat national service, and ran the church choir until he left the area in 1973. When he moved to Lancashire, a county he came to love, he transferred his passion for church music to the churches of Reed and Simmonstone and the cathedral here at Blackburn. Not only did he play the organ and run the choir at Reed and Simmonstone, he also created new choirs like the Reedston Singers, 
made up of women from the local churches and community. He was their choir master for 27 years. For our dad, church music was never just an accompaniment to a service. It, it was something that he believed brought people closer to God, for the listeners and the singers. And believe me, he coaxed some heavenly sounds out of previously tone-deaf pupils. His irrepressible energy and can-do attitude continued even when he was forced to go into care with my mum. In the year and a half he was at the home, he staged a pantomime, created a dementia choir, learnt to paint, thank you Ross, changed the menus and had just persuaded them to grow their own veg. He was still working on management to install solar panels and a hydro hydrotherapy pool. <laughs> I don't think he was getting very far with that one. I make him sound like a saint, but like all of us, he had his failings. He could be a proud man. He was a perfectionist and expected the very best of himself and all those around him. He was a strict father and his strong beliefs were often at odds with his children and the modern world. And he supported Burnley FC. He used to drag himself off to Turf Moor to watch them lose well into his 90th year. His death has left a huge void in our lives that has surprised us with its scale and intensity, not least for mum. For more than 67 years, he was her husband, soulmate, and ally, and more recently, her advocate, champion, and protector. But as Her Majesty so poignantly observed, grief is the price we pay for love. Thank you. And those last words, grief is the price we pay for love, is a lovely lead into our next song. My love, my song is love unknown. My Saviour's love for me. We stand to sing together.
Please be seated. What is success? To laugh often and much, to win the respect of intelligent people and the affection of children, to earn the appreciation of honest critics and endure the betrayal of false friends, to appreciate beauty, to find the best in others, to leave the world a bit better, whether by a healthy child, a garden patch, or a redeemed social condition. To know even one life has breathed easier because you have lived. This is to have succeeded. reading from John's Gospel, chapter 14, Jesus talking to his disciples about his departure. Do not let your hearts be troubled. Believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house there are many dwelling places. If it were not so, would I have told you that I go to prepare a place for you? And if I go, and prepare a place for you, I will come again and will take you to myself, so that where I am, there you may be also. And you know the way to the place where I am going. Thomas said to him, Lord, we do not know where you are going. How can we know the way? Jesus said to him, I am the way and the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. Pam, Mark, Pip, family, friends. We've heard so much already about Peter, the man that he was and very much still is in our hearts and minds. And it's interesting as we gather here today, it seems to me that one of the most profound things that we can do as human beings is to grieve or to mourn the death of a person that we love. It sets us apart from, in a sense, the rest of God's wonderful creation and the fact that so many people have gathered is profound in itself, in the busyness of life. There's so many other things that we could be doing, but we stop because we care and because we love. And in this service today, it seems to me that we do two things, really. The first is we give thanks for the life of Peter and all that he means to each one of us here today. But it also gives us an opportunity to proclaim afresh the hope that we have in God, made known in the person of Jesus Christ. And again, in the busyness of life, when we sometimes just don't have time for so many things, hope is often pushed away. So it's good to have this moment to remind us of that hope. Grief, it seems to me, is in many ways a sign of our humanity. Grief reveals our inner being and can show the world through our sometimes uncontrollable emotions that we cared, that we loved, and that we are sad because of the person, the death of the person who has died. And of course, we often struggle to talk about death. Some people say they fear death. 
But actually, my theory is it's not death that we fear, but it's the process of death. And particularly when we have hope, hope of a resurrection, death is something not to be feared. When I arrived here as Dean of Blackburn back in 2017, Peter Jelly had just stopped being on our cathedral chapter. And I can remember having a conversation with him soon after I had died, and he soon after I arrived, and he assured me that it was nothing to do with my arrival that he was leaving. I'm never quite sure whether that's true. But nevertheless, he didn't give up his engagement with Blackburn Cathedral. He'd been part of our Cathedral Trust. He'd been part of our Finance Committee, although he did resign as chair of that pretty quickly after I came as dean. Again, it was nothing to do with my arrival, so he kept saying. But he'd been a great stalwart of this place and supporter of it, and for that I'm very thankful. One of uh, his big legacies to the place was his commitment through music to the cathedral's outreach to the wider area through our music outreach program, which at its height before the disasters of COVID had the cathedral reaching into 120 primary schools across this diocese. And a large part of that was to Peter's energy, which we've heard about, his commitment and his tenacity and his willingness not to shut up sometimes and just keep going on about things uh, till they happened. So for that, we're very thankful. His work across the wider diocese, I know, uh, was seen through his again involvement, his service at Bishop's Council and in synods, and he gave so much. And again, asking sometimes those very difficult questions. And in a strange way, being what I like to call a holy irritant, because actually the church needs holy irritants. Uh, more than ever and I think Peter was one of those and in those latter years of his life and um, particularly uh, for me it was sad not to see him as much as I did when I first arrived here in Blackburn and one of my last memories of Peter was here in the cathedral with Pam and he'd come to buy a couple of bottles of Cathedra gin as his way of continuing to support Blackburn Cathedral. But I think Peter's faith and his trust in God was clear. But that faith was a faith that was worked out in the ordinary things of life and the, his striving to facilitate change in a variety of ways that would affect people's lives. And that is so, so important. When, as I said earlier on, the danger in our modern world is that we are all too busy to care and to roll our sleeves up and get involved. But Peter seemed to do that right up until his dying days, as we heard in Pip's lovely eulogy of what he was doing uh, in the home where he was. But of course, death is never easy. And as a Christian, I do not believe that God protects us from the pain and the grief that death brings. But what I do believe, and I think what Peter believed, was that he can offer hope the hope of eternal life made known through the person of Jesus Christ for all who believe and trust in him. And Peter very much embraced that hope in Jesus. So I think today we can, with a certain confidence, entrust him into God's loving care and God's safe keeping. In the Bible reading that I've just read from John's Gospel, 
we heard Jesus speaking with his disciples, thinking about his death and trying to help his disciples to understand what's going to happen. And I love this reading because there is a holy irritant in it, and his name is Thomas. Thomas is one of Jesus' closest disciples, and he doesn't really understand what Jesus is going on about. And unlike all the other disciples who just sit there, I have this wonderful picture of them nodding as Jesus says, I'm going to prepare a place. They're just, if you like, uh, the ordinary people who don't want to upset the apple cart. Thomas says, hey up, we have no idea where you're going, Jesus, so how can we know the way? It doesn't quite say it like that in the Greek. That's my paraphrase of it. But that's what's going on here. Jesus, Thomas says to Jesus, we've no idea what you're talking about, and we don't know where you're going. But the interesting thing about Jesus is he loves holy irritants, and he respects Thomas's question. And he simply says to him, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one goes to the Father except through me. It's as if Jesus is saying, whatever your questions in life, it's relationship that matters. Thomas, it's your relationship with me that will secure your future. It's relationships in life that are so important. And that's why you're here today, because of your relationship with Jesus, with, with Peter, and hopefully with Jesus, because it is into Jesus' trust that in a few moments' time we will commit Peter. Thomas's honesty, I would suggest, is encouraging. Why? Because it's only as we face up to our questions about faith and doubt and life that we can grow ourselves in hope in God. At this moment, when you're grieving, it's often difficult to find even a strong faith, if we've had it, to say goodbye to somebody that we love. But God, we're told, is love. And those who live in love live in God, and God lives in them. So in the midst of our suffering and pain, this service also, as I said right at the beginning, helps us to re-establish our hope, to reach out to the power of God's love and allow it to transform not only our lives now here on earth, but our future in eternity. So as we give thanks for Peter's life today, we can do so, I believe, with a certain confidence of faith. There is hope, both in life and in death. And that hope is found in the person of Jesus, who promises to raise us up on the last day. Amen. John is going to come and help us put our trust in that hope as we talk to God, as we pray together. Thank you so much, John, for stepping into the breach. Let us pray. God of mercy, Lord of life, you have made us in your image to reflect your truth and light. We give you thanks today for Peter for the grace and mercy he received from you, for all that was good in his life, and for the memories we treasure today. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us all with the gift of this earthly life, and has given to our brother Peter his life of over 91 years and gifts of character. God our Father, we thank you now for all his life, for every memory of love and joy, 
for every good deed done by him and every sorrow shared with us. We thank you for his life and for his death we thank you for the rest in Christ he now enjoys. We thank you for giving him to us. We thank you for the glory we share together. Especially we thank you for his devotion to the church, the cathedral, and in particular to the parish of St. John's Reed and St. Peter Simonstone. Peter's passion and talent for music were put to great use, and we thank you, Lord, as we celebrate today for all that his achievements as a leader of local choirs, church choir master, and organist for so many years, and also his financial skills as a school governor and with the diocese. Lord, in your mercy. You promised eternal life to those who believe. Remember for good this your servant Peter, who was a treasured friend and family member, as we also remember him. Bring all who rest in Christ into the fullness of your kingdom, where sins have been forgiven and death is no more. Lord, in your mercy. Your mighty power brings out joy, grief, and life out of death. Look in mercy on Pam, Pip, Mark, the wider family, and all who mourn. Give them patient faith in times of darkness. Strengthen them with the knowledge of your love. We have the opportunity today to recount our individual memories of Peter, together with family and friends, directly after the service, and join in the celebration of food and drink in the South Transept, fully celebrating Peter's life among us. Lord, in your mercy. You are tender towards your children, and your mercy is over all your works. Give us the wisdom and grace, and from the example that Peter has left for us, let us also make the best of our time here on earth, to turn to Christ and follow in his steps in the way that he leads to everlasting life. Lord, in your mercy. We make our prayers through Jesus Christ, our Saviour. Amen. Let us pray with confidence, as our Saviour has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. We stand to sing our final hymn, Lord, for the years your love has kept and guided.
remain standing for the commendation. So let us commend our brother Peter to the mercy of God, our Maker and Redeemer. Heavenly Father, by your mighty power, you gave us life, and in your love you have given us new life in Christ Jesus. We entrust Peter to your merciful keeping in the faith of Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who died and rose again to save us, and is now alive and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit in glory forever. Amen. So may God give you his comfort and his peace, his light and joy in this world and the next, and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you, and remain with you now and always. Amen.